The Prophetic Call. Hello, family. I want to welcome you to The Prophetic Call. This is season two. I'm so excited to jump into this new season and to declare the word of the Lord. I have friends that are going to be coming on the different episodes, and they're going to be sharing what God is saying in this season. We need to hear a word from the Lord. Of course, my scripture that I always read on this is Amos chapter three and verse seven. Surely the Lord God does nothing unless he reveals his secret to his servant's the prophets. And what that means is that God will do nothing. <laughs> it's real simple. God speaks. Before he speaks, before he does something, he speaks to his prophets. He reveals secrets to them. And so in this time frame, I believe that we need to hear a word from the Lord so we know what we are supposed to do. Not just a word of knowledge, but also a word of wisdom. And today on this program, I have a man of God who is proven, he is trusted, he's tried and true, and I just am so thankful to have Bishop Gary Oliver on the prophetic call. I want to welcome you, Bishop. Thank you, Prophet. I appreciate it. I'm so excited to be on here with you. What an honor. Yeah, it's an honor, and it's amazing because <clears throat> Not only is he and his wife there, they're our friends, but also uh, they are our pastors. And I think it's important, and I want to say this to prophetic people that are listening to this, that you need a pastor. You need to be plugged right. into a local church. And so I thought it was very apropos for uh, us to have on this first episode of the second season, our pastor of the church, Encounter Church in Benbrook, Texas, and uh, to have him on this program. And so, Bishop, it's just wonderful to have you. I've known you throughout the years, uh, but now just coming to yeah. Texas, moving to Texas, we've been able to connect in a different way and to be a part of a church that is flowing in the river and flowing in the Holy Ghost. It's just absolutely yes. amazing. Now, my question to you is, is throughout the years, like what prophetic voices have really shaped you and your ministry? Well, there have been several, uh, Patrick, and thank you so much for opening with that, because I do believe that that is important. I do believe that the voices that speak into our life literally do shape us. And uh, when, when I was a very young man, there was a, a very strong prophetic gift uh, that I was around a lot back in the day. Um, and uh, I was around uh, some guys that were uh, part of a denomination. It was the United Pentecostal Church, if anybody's ever heard of that. But uh, it's a smaller Pentecostal denomination. But these men were very, very strong. But God saw fit to bring me out of that even into greater revelation and greater understanding. So I got to meet guys like in the 80s, like people like Joseph Garlington and uh, people like Dr. Mark Sharona. And I would say that out of literally out of all the prophetic voices that have really spoken into my life, that those two are probably uh, well, there's no probably, it's without a doubt. They are the strongest voices that have spoken into my life. And then, of course, I uh, went years later and, and worked with uh, guys like Carlton Pearson and Eddie Long and different ones. And they had, in their seasons, they had some very, very strong prophetic giftings and blessings. And so it was very powerful to be around some of those great men back in those days. But I would have to say without a doubt that and I always call Mark Sharona my 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 prophet because that's yes. uh, he has spoken to my life so many times, and everything he's ever prophesied to me has come to pass exactly the way he said it. Wow! Yeah, he's powerful. My grandmother prophesied over him when he was a young man, and wow. uh, and they've our families have been connected ever since as well, yeah. and uh, it's amazing. Now you also. Uh, your pastoring and you, you, but you've been also in the whole worship dimension and flowed in worship and songwriting for many years all over the world, really. And uh, I wanted to ask you with the prophetic and worship, how do you see those things working together um, as the ministry goes forth? Honestly, I see um, that the two are almost hand in hand, uh, that it, it takes one uh, to have the other, if you will. Yeah. If you remember the kings that got out in the wilderness and they got lost and they said, hey, is there not a, a man that has a word from the Lord? 
And of course, they find they say there's Elisha, and Jehoshaphat said, "Who is Elisha?" He said, "Well, that's the guy that poured water on the hands of Elijah, mm -hmm. which gives us a powerful principle because you become what you serve." And so Elisha steps up, and he says, before he will speak, "Is there not a minstrel available? Right. I need a musician because I really believe just like that." Saul was was sent these terrorizing spirits or evil spirit from the Lord because of the way he was behaving and acting in his choices. And David would come in and play and those evil spirits would have to leave. There's something really profoundly different between a minstrel and a musician yeah. and something profoundly different between a, a worshiper and a singer. Good. But when you find a minstrel who knows how to worship and somebody who knows how to tap into God, then the presence of God is so available because it moves the heart of God. We come before his presence with singing. We enter his gates with thanksgiving. All of the things that the scripture tells us that we dance before the Lord, we clap our hands, we rejoice, and we can say, you know, I don't like to do all of that stuff or whatever, but you know, there were some young boys that were killed for offering strange fire. I would mm. really want to offer what he tells me to offer, because I think that that's how God is. He tells you how he's to be loved, and he tells you what it means to love him and uh, worship him. And when we do that, the Bible says that he's enthroned on the praises of his people, and the king never sits on the throne to just hang out. Hmm. He always sits on the throne to do kingdom business. It's yeah. not like, hey, what's up, guys? You know, I'm glad y'all call me over here. I'm here. No, he comes in and he sits down on the throne. And that's when the prophetic opens up. And that's how we know he is on the throne because the prophetic is working and the prophetic is moving. That means God has enthroned himself and he is now speaking. Cancer, what are you doing here? Sickness, what are you doing? Disease, what are you doing here? Poverty, you can't stay here. This is my kingdom. You don't belong here. And God begins to speak through his prophets. And to me, it's a very powerful thing. It's a hand in hand thing. It's a must. Absolutely. Absolutely. It creates the atmosphere. I mean, yep. And, and, you know, being in the house and in counter church, the atmosphere is charged. I mean, you being a pastor and a prophetic voice, apostolic voice, Bishop, also, you also have this, this thing where you, you have the worship and those people that are playing in the worship team, we can walk into the room and they're setting that those menstruals are setting the atmosphere. So for people like me, when I come in there, it's easy to minister. <laughs> it's yes. easy because the atmosphere yeah. creates charged uh, with yeah. the presence of God. And, uh, and so I believe that that's important when you are, and I'm teaching here a little bit, we're teaching here when yep. you are flowing in prophetic ministry, because we're raising up a company of an army of prophetic Amen. people in this time. And when you're flowing in prophetic ministry, understand what Bishop just said, that the prophetic and worship go hand in hand. It creates the atmosphere. It sets the tone for the flow of ministry and the mood of the Holy Spirit as well. And so being sensitive to that is important. I like what you said, because if you don't like worship, you're going to be in trouble right. <laughs> in heaven and here on earth, because right. worship is that atmosphere where God shows up yes. and sits down and is king. Absolutely. This is powerful. Absolutely. It's, it's, a, it's a reality of this walk that we're in. It is just a reality. We serve a great and mighty God who doesn't need my praise. Mm. I need to praise him. Wow. He is, he's good in himself. In fact, he praised himself better than I will ever praise him <laughs> when on the first day he looked around and clapped his hands and said, it's good. <laughs> That's a better, pra how, do, how do you beat that praise? Right. And the other thing about praise that's so prolific to me is that you will never tell God anything about himself he hasn't already revealed to you. Wow. So wow. he tells you who he is, and that's how we come back and we say, oh, you are the great and mighty one. Mm -hmm. Oh, you are the holy one. Oh, you are the righteous one. You are the majestic one. Wow. And when we speak those terms out of our mouth and those relational uh, moments come and the presence comes so thick and so tangible, that's, that's when the prophetic word comes in such power and, and glory. Wow. All right. Now I'm going to ask you what they call it, the 
50,000, the million dollar question. <laughs> and that is, Bishop, what do you hear God saying in this hour? It's really interesting uh, to me because I, I have sought the face of the Lord about that. Where are we in this moment? And I cannot help but go back to Acts, the second chapter, and to Joel. Mm, yes. And to really go back and look at Joel. Joel was in a situation where everything that they thought they had was gone. Mm. Their food was gone. And, and if you remember, the Bible talks about, you know, in the first chapter, he talks about that there were some gnawing locusts that came, swarming locusts, and uh, what the swarming locusts left and the creeping locusts ate. Mm -hmm. And then what the creeping locusts left, then the stripping locusts came. Mm -hmm. And I feel like if you just look at those, those situations, gnawing, um, I know is, a, is kind of an old fashioned word, an old school word, gnawing. We used to, you would hear old people sometimes say, man, that thing just gnawed at me and I couldn't get rid of it, you know, mm -hmm. meaning I was pondering it. I couldn't get it out of my mind. It just stayed in my mind. And then uh, the idea of the swarming, if you've ever seen anybody run through a swarm of bugs, it's like, you know, you're just batting and you're running and you're, you're freaking out. You can't really tell where you're going. You can't really tell what you're doing because you're so caught up in fighting off the swarming things that may not even be after you, right. but they are irritating you. It's like having an aggravating fly around, just you're always swatting. And then he talks about the idea that it was creeping locusts, that there are things in life that creep up on us uh, unaware because we were so caught off guard. We didn't really realize what was happening until it was already happening. Wow. And then stripping locusts, things that just kind of strip away at the very core of who we are. I feel like that's where America has been. Mm. I feel like that's where the world has been. I feel like that's a great picture uh, for the pandemic. And I feel like that what God is saying is he's saying to us in this season, here's what I really want you to do. You know, I can, it, and, and you, can, you can look at the whole piece of it and it's very powerful uh, as you know, but when he gets through, he says, it was I who led this great army of locusts against you. God wasn't trying to kill his people because he rescued them before they ever you starved to death. It wasn't wow. that he was trying to kill them. Mm -hmm. He stopped everything. But he said, that was me. I'm trying to get your attention. Wow. And I think the pandemic came to get our attention on another level. The pandemic didn't make us anything. It didn't turn us into anything. It revealed who we already are. And I think that that's why our church pews are empty. I think it's why there's a lot of people not returning to church because we weren't really in church. We, we went, but we weren't there. And it's like, talking to somebody that's reading the newspaper or scrolling through their iPad. You know, you can't have a conversation. Right. And it's, uh, you watch all of these different variances in our world and where everything is, and you see where we are in a political arena. You see where we are in our financial arena. You see where we are, man, with all of this inflation of prices, gas prices, food shortages, everything. We're at the same shape. And what's really crazy is people that haven't talked about God for 30 years all of a sudden become theologians. <laughs> you know, it's, <laughs> they go, yeah. well, it's because we did this and it's because we did that, it's because this, because that happened, whatever. I don't know what all the reasons were, except that I do know what God said to Joel. Mm -hmm. And he said, therefore, just return to me yeah. with the rending of your hearts and not your garments. Wow. Don't try to turn this into some spectacle and outward show of repentance, but let it be a pure repentance that comes from the heart. And I really believe, Prophet, that's where we are. I think that we as America have to turn to the Lord with the rending of our hearts, yeah. not our garments. And then we're going to stand and testify once again that he has poured out his spirit wow. upon all men. Yeah, And I believe we're going to see a great outpouring. Yeah. And that's where then in that scripture where he said, and I will restore the years Yes, that were eaten, that were taken, that were stolen. Yeah, I'm going to restore the years. And it's interesting about 
the name Joel in the Hebrew. You know me, I love my Hebrew. Right, um, right. Joel means Yah is El. And El is an interesting name because it's used, mm -hmm. like, for instance, for El Shaddai or Elohim. Right. But also it's interesting because El was the name of the Canaanite God, whom they oh. called God. Mm -hmm. And so it's like his name was an announcement. Yah is El. That, that wow. one you think you're worshiping, that's yeah. not the one. That's Yah, the Yahweh, one. Yah. Jehovah is the one. And, that's good. And, and, and so he's like, all of a sudden you realize with your, when you're, if you're Joel, your name is an announcement. Your name yes. is a revelation. Your story is a revelation. I look yes. at the book of, of Joel and realize that it's an announcement. It's personal. And yeah. what God wants to do is bring restoration, mm -hmm. not only to you, but yeah. through you. And, yeah. uh, and so I love what you're talking about because yeah. it's like, you know, we've had people rise up and they're political prophets and they're pandemic prophets right. and they're rising up and speaking these words, but God comes and he says, well, guess what? I'm actually behind this yeah. and I'm None working behind the scenes. I'm sitting on the throne, you know? Yeah. So I love what you're saying, um, you know, about this because we need proper perspective on we really do. what is happening in this hour. We need to yeah. understand what God yeah. is up to in this season um, going forth. And one of the things you were talking about me earlier, also with the whole thing about Joel, and you mentioned Acts, is the pouring out of God's Spirit. Yes. And let's talk about that for a moment, because I believe you're really keying in on something when you brought up Acts to this, the connection between these two verses. Yes. Um, you know, maybe just share about that if you could. Yeah, it's, you know, it's the, the very thing that Peter preached on the day of Pentecost. Uh, the day of Pentecost comes, and this is the very text mm -hmm. that Peter pulls out of all of the scripture and says, this is that yeah. which was spoken of by the prophet Joel, that in the last days, God will pour out of his spirit. And he goes on and announces the whole thing that Joel announced, that there would be dreams and visions and prophecies. Our children would prophesy. All of this is going to happen. And I really believe that we're in a moment where there is a fresh outpouring. Now, let me just say this. The Bible, uh, Jesus told the disciples, he said, I want you to go to the upper room and I want you to stay there or tarry until you're endued with power from on high. We used to, uh, you know, talk a lot about tarrying before the Lord. I think there's a difference between tarrying and waiting on the Lord. We tarried for something that was yet to appear, but it appeared and it has not left. Wow. So it's here. So I don't have to so go good. back and tarry for the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost is present. The Holy Ghost is here. The Holy Ghost is inside of me. He is with us. Jesus said, I'm not going to leave you like an orphan. He said, in fact, I'm going to ask my father. He's going to send you an advocate. This advocate is not just going to be somebody that comes alongside you to help you, but he's actually going to be in you. In fact, you know what? I'm coming to you. I'm going to be in you, Jesus says. And he said, not only will I be in you, but my father will be in you. In wow. fact, we're just all three just going to gang up and live in your house. And that's why, <laughs> like Joseph Garlington preached so beautifully at our prophetic conference, I'm bigger on the inside than I am on the outside mm -hmm. because <laughs> I have to have the capacity for holy God to live inside me. And wow. what a revelation it is. And that's what Holy Spirit is all about. Holy Spirit is, it, and you know, it, it's interesting because uh, the Holy Spirit in you is for you, but the Holy Spirit on you is for others. So when, when I get saved and I receive the Holy Spirit, that gives me the power, but he says, that the Holy Spirit set up on each of them yeah. so that, and it gave them power. Why? So that they could be witnesses, witnesses about who Jesus is. You know, I don't really believe that being a witness is walking up and shaking somebody's hand and say, Hey, do you know Jesus Christ is your personal savior? That's not witnessing to me. Right. Witnessing is the lifestyle that is lived so profoundly in so front of good. those who disbelieve that wow. they cannot help but believe that there is a God in heaven and there is a God that moves and lives in the earth and operates in men and women today. Wow, that's so powerful. And then the outpouring 
doesn't just stay in the upper room. No. <laughs> Cause you're talking about the God pouring out his spirit here, right? It doesn't just stay there. It spills out into the street. It hits the one twenty, And then when Peter starts preaching, it's 3,500. And then it just goes on and on and on. You know, it's, it's 3000 here. It's 7,000. It's whatever. God just keeps moving. And I really believe that we're going to see the day, you know, back in the day in the Pentecostal church. And, and I know you can relate to this on certain levels as well, Patrick. And that is when I was a kid, man, we just thought it was great, great, you know, just Holy Ghost day if somebody received the baptism of the Holy Spirit and spoke in tongues. <laughs> but then we moved into a season in my teen years where we saw them receiving the Holy Spirit by the dozens. Hmm. And we saw people like in a praise and worship service that had never been to a church that even spoke in tongues or never been to a Pentecostal church, but yet all of a sudden their hands were up and they were singing with us. And the next thing you know, they're speaking an unknown language mm -hmm. and they're like, oh my God, this is so beautiful. How come I never did this before? You know, why was I not told about this? And now I think that we're about to step into a season where we're going to see entire congregations yes. just moved upon by the Holy Ghost spirit and god is going to reveal himself and make himself known but i think it only comes through those who are rending the heart and not the garments wow not trying to make it an outward show yeah. but it's something down here i really want god i really want him wow i was thinking when you were speaking that um you know we have all these church growth strategies <laughs> and they're good ideas of you know getting getting our internet together and our social media together right and, our services need to be worship needs to be this long and our services and our preaching need to be this long. And, right. you know, we have to make it user friendly. And there's been a, so much effort over the last 10, 15 years on st church growth strategies yeah. and making sure that everyone's comfortable. But you just mentioned something in Acts. How did the church start? What was the church growth strategy? It right. was the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. Yes, <laughs> and the spilling out the, of of yes. the upper room into the streets. That is the best church. We need to go back to that. That's the best church strategy <laughs> I ever heard. Need to go back to that, <laughs> really, to the original. Yeah. You know. Yes, yeah. I love it. You know, even in the Gospels, uh, when they brought the lame man and led him down through the roof, the Bible says that when it was noised abroad that Jesus was in the house, wow, there was no on. room to hold the people. Yes. And I want to tell you, if we just get Jesus in the house. There won't be any room to hold the people. If we just get Holy Spirit in the house, if we just get baptism of the Holy Spirit, the outpouring of the Holy Spirit, pouring out upon God's people in these numbers that are just mind blowing and where we see God literally change people's lives because I'm a firm believer that God still changes people's lives. I am a firm believer that God can still heal anything whatever it is. He can heal cancer. Yeah. He can heal HIV. He yes. can heal bipolarism. God can heal anything. He yes. can get a hold of your genetic makeup in such a way that it changes everything in your structure and puts you back in order. I don't know how he does it. I don't really have to know how he does it. I just know he does it. And when he does it, it's profoundly beautiful. Wow. You know what? We need to pray for this right now. Yeah. Because even as the word is being spoken, you know, it's also being released in Absolutely. this moment. And I just, even as you started speaking about these things, about healings and about the release yes. of the power of God, I believe that it's here right now. And Me I know too. we have our little setup for this program, but just even, hey. Bishop, can you right now just even just begin to pray and even just release a word for people um, and release the healing power of God in this moment. And if you're watching this, I just want you to be ready to receive because Amen. there is a word, the presence, there's an impartation in the presence of God and yes. through the word of God being released into your life um, as Bishop speaks. And to receive him is as easy as receiving oxygen. You breathe him in. You take him in. You just take him on. There's nothing you have to do. He is speaking the word even now. 
And I felt it really strong. It really sharpened my spirit when I even said bipolar because I feel like somebody may be struggling with some mental health issues that is watching right now. And God is saying to you right now, I've got you. You've been fighting this long enough on your own. You've spent enough money on the doctors. You have gone to enough hospitals. You have gone to enough specialists. And God says, now turn to me with the rending of your heart, not your garments. And I'm going to do a great work in your mind and your emotions and your spirit. Some of you thought you were living in a place where you would never get beyond. How can I live beyond free from the trauma of what I went through as a child? I'm telling you today in the name of Jesus, the trauma stops here. The trauma stops in the name of Jesus and that the healing power of God is going to walk in your house and peace like you have never known peace like you have never known. I feel the peace of God right now. And the peace of God is going to saturate your being to such a level that you will not even think about that trauma for the rest of this day. You're going to wake up one day and say, wow, I haven't thought about it in years. I haven't thought about it in weeks. I haven't thought about it in months. God is healing right now. So Father, we thank you for the healing power. We thank you for the deliverance of your word. We thank you, God, because you said that you sent your word to heal our disease, God. There was a word just loose that just now has healing in its wings, God. As somebody is watching right now on this prophetic moment, God, and they're breathing in the healing presence of God, your lungs are changing. Somebody's lungs are changing. Somebody who's been struggling with asthma, your lungs are changing right now. You're being healed right now. And the breath of God is going to be strong in you. And you're not going to have to get on an oxygen tank. In fact, somebody, the Lord, the doctors just told you they were going to have to put you on oxygen. And the Lord says, that's not true. If you will trust him in this moment, you're not going to have to live on an oxygen tank. So I declare the word of the Lord over you right now. I declare it is done. And I declare you healed and well in Jesus name by the power of the Holy Spirit. Yes. Amen. 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 This is the hour Amen. where we're seeing the release it is. of the miracles. It's really amazing. And so if you need a touch, as Bishop has been prophesying and praying over people, if you need a touch anywhere in your body, in your health, in your finances, in your family, in your emotions, this is a moment for you to receive because yes. there is an unction of the Holy Spirit that is being released in this time to bring change to your life. And I declare to you that you're entering into a time frame where you're going to see those prayers that you've been praying come to fruition. You're going to see yes. answers and solutions coming your way by the presence of the Lord. Things are changing. Yes. Things are going to be different from this moment yes. on. And it starts in the presence, the pouring out. What Bishop's been talking about today, the pouring out of God's spirit. And that's where it starts. That's where everything in your life begins to move. And where there's been inactivity and dormancy, the Lord is now causing there to be of movement. There's an activity that's taking place by his spirit in your life. Oh, this is so powerful. Um, we could just stay here in this moment. Uh, but I encourage you, if you're watching this, watch it again, because there's just, yes. when the anointing comes in, you have to move with it. There's power yeah. in the presence of God that's released in people's lives and through the word of the Lord that's being spoken. And so, Bishop, I'm telling you, this is awesome. <laughs> this, is, this is it amazing. Is. You know, we have our plans, but then God shows up. And Man, uh, I tell you. And I feel God so much in here right now. I'm just, uh, I'm in this room by myself and I'm just watching, man. And it's almost hazy in here right now. And I'm like, man, God is so real and he's so rich. And he just, he loves his people so much. We don't even understand how much he loves us. And he loves us so much and he's so present to heal us and so present to do what we need. And, uh, when you, when you spoke that word that he will make up to you the years or he's going to restore, I think is the way the King James says it. The New American Standard says he will make up to you. I really believe what that means for us is, you know, if I've got a, if I've got a little boy that I'm going to take to the ball game and I get called into work and I can't go, uh, and then I have to tell him, son, I'm sorry, but I got called into work. We can't go. I'm so sorry. He's going to be very disappointed. And then dad is going to say something like this, but I promise I'll make it up to you. 
And when I say I'll make it up to you, that doesn't mean we're just going to go to the ball game. That means we're going to go to the ball game, and now I'm going to add some ice cream in the picture and some pizza and stuff. In other words, I'm going to do something extra. I'm going to do more than what it takes to make you even. Wow. And I hear the Holy Spirit saying, I'm getting ready to do more than what it takes to make you even. I'm not just going to restore in this season, but I'm going to make it up to you. I'm going to add something in there extra. Wow. I received that myself. I'm yes, man. That. I'm taking that. You know, you go, here's some words. You're like, that's me too, Lord. I'm taking this thing for sure. Wow, Bishop. Amen. Well, I want to thank you for coming on. And everybody who's been watching, I want to encourage you to go to my website, patrickkitely.com. There's an abundance of resources that we have there, and we're adding a whole lot more. We have preaching classes and prophetic classes and master classes for marketplace ministry as well. We're going to Israel in 2023. You can find out all of those things on uh, the the website and check you can check it out and thank you so much also for those of you that are donating and giving to the ministry we really appreciate uh, all the resources that you're sending our way as we continue to get the message out to get the word of the Lord out and uh, so I love this podcast and I'm so excited to have uh, season two of the prophetic call and the lineup of people that we have that are coming on are so powerful and it started right here with Bishop Oliver this is is so powerful. Well, as we close, Bishop, I just want you just to pray one more time for everybody um, that is listening in and Amen. watching uh, this program today. Amen. Holy Spirit, you are welcome in every home and in every heart. Today we receive of you. We receive of your love. We receive of your word. And we receive of your kindness. And Father, I ask that you would bless your people, look them full in the face, and cause them to prosper in peace as we move forward in your name. Amen. Amen. Well, thank you, Bishop Gary thank Oliver, you. for coming on. Everybody, go check out his social media on YouTube. It's Encounter Church and also Bishop Gary Oliver. Get both of those on yeah. YouTube, thank TikTok, you. Instagram, Facebook all of the above the message is being put out there in a mighty way in a powerful way we have such a great time every week um, at encounter church as bishop is leading us it's just super fun so thank you bishop for coming on here today and i want to thank everybody thank for coming in and tuning in to the prophetic call god bless you